Good morning everybody, so Levy on YouTube commented on my old feast map guide and asked me if I made a guide for falls, at which case I realized I never made one for falls. Why? I have no idea. Reason being, probably because I have the attention span of a noodle. So overall, this guide should work. The only issue is that if you're solo queuing, then this strategy is basically just going to have a 50-50 chance of working at that point, because this strategy works if your team actually does this strategy, which I'm hoping this video gets shared around a lot to where people actually commit to this strategy but this strategy is pretty much a foolproof plan if you're fighting a team that's very unorganized because this allows you to organize your team to capitalize on capture points and the bounties as they pop up so this guide for falls basically consists of four people going b and one person going a or c depending on whatever side you end up on the person from a then goes to push c and then on b point when everybody takes the b point then three people go from b to push to that point where that one player going from a to c is going the person that's stays on B is normally a ranged class so that way anybody going up to B that tries to take it you can dismount them because they're ranged and you can hit them as they go up the ramps. Now the class synergy is basically built around the meta that is currently in the game. So before the meta was block and fester so you couldn't have a tank on B because they would just get basically turned into paper mache. But with the current meta with block and health pot now you can actually have a tank class on B. Another example of this is the old fester mark meta you are better off having a moglomancer at b than a healer because the guaranteed crit plus the mark damage and the fester damage now with the block and health pot meta being based around survivability meta now you want a healer instead of a moglomancer because as the fester and mark meta was all about just raw pure damage then you could have a moglomancer to add to that you know basically adding more raw damage to the already existing raw damage but now the meta being about survivability now you want a healer because that healer adds Adds more survivability to your team and because tanks do really good with survivability now you can have a tank on b point during this meta of block and pot so basically on b point you always want a support class based off of what the meta is so either a moglomancer or a healer at this current time in the game as those are the only real two support classes we have then the class that goes on to the a point you normally want to put the class that's very good at being able to 1v1 on that point because nine times out of ten the person that takes their c point is by themselves so if you have the 1v1 on your class go after that person on their c point you can get c point a lot easier especially when you win the b point and you can rotate to c and typically nine times out of ten you want a guardian as a tank because they just their passive ability is so strong that paired up with any form of defensive it just makes them a, a basically just a live lord however though warrior is also a good option too for a tank because with the recent changes now warrior is actually a tank like it's supposed to be the only issue between the two of choosing is you normally want a guardian because it it has a some form of self heal and it can still output a lot of damage whereas warrior has a high burst window but not very consistent damage not only that it doesn't have the healing and on top of that your defense is basically based off of how many people you can hit with whirlwind so overall in a team fight on B a warrior is going to get folded quicker than a guardian whereas a guardian can do a lot more to survive especially when a team is supporting them not only that I also want to get this kind of a, as a trend going but if you see a samurai on a b point the samurai has to die first because if you don't kill the samurai the samurai is going to start deleting people as soon as they get below 40 percent health samurai is also a double-edged sword because it's great for team fights the only issue though is you have to make sure that your team isn't overstacking the classes because if you overstack this can also might make you lose because you don't have you're not feeling other roles that other classes can do a lot more better or efficiently so if you made it this far in the video i congratulate you because i probably bored everyone to death already but what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my whole entire guild to do a whole five-man pre-made to show you guys how far you can push this strategy i also want to say that my guild uses this strategy and it's so foolproof we don't even use voice chat the voice chat in this video is literally just for educational pur purposes to help you guys understand what we're looking at and like what we're doing and also what we're thinking so let's get into the video okay so it looks like all of you guys are gonna go to b and then i'm going to so in falls the main strategy is you always send four people to b based off of the meta and you always send one person to a now you might say what do you do if there's two people coming to the per one person that went to a and this relies on people at b because someone at b has to notice this and rotate accordingly to help the person that went to a so that way at a you have your 2v2 and at b you have your 3v3 so then when you win the b fight 
you can then push their C point and the people who win the A can move to the C point as well. And then you leave whoever is ranged on B to dismount anybody going to B. This is the bread and butter of this map. Play A point with a uh, ninja. However, let's have a quick word from our sponsors. All right, yeah. Mrs. Webster, you said I sucked at math and I fell at life, but now I'm on TV with Sensei Santa Yogi, so you can suck it. Back to the video. So before we dive really deep in this video, I want to point out the class composition that we have on our team because I couldn't, I wasn't a class that could go to the B team fight. Everybody else was classes that you would want on a B fight. So I swapped to Ninja and decided to go play A and C instead. So our class composition is Healer, Warrior, Necromancer, and a Guardian. Now because the meta is about survivability, Healer and Guardian are, are a perfect pick for a B fight. Not only that, Warrior is a high DPS, well I should say high burst class and it is also very very tanky which is another great pick for a team fight on b not only that we then have a necromancer which is also even another great pick because necromancers can do what's known as basically the melty melty so overall a good composition for a team fight on b and that's why i didn't go to b and i changed to ninja because instead i'm going to be playing a which is more of a 1v1 scenario so i went with a 1v1 class Right, I'm gonna need you guys to start rotating to C because there's only one person on that point. And I'm gonna need one person to rotate to me. Uh, if Hale, if you could come. Get the Necromancer first. Now the first very big mistake that we did as a team was when everybody went to B, they didn't notice that only two to three players went to B, meaning one of the four people on B could rotate back to me. Now I want you guys to pay very close attention because this is something that's very like a very fine minute detail that a lot of players don't actually understand or learn. So I'm going to show you guys in this video. So because my team is overstacking, we're going to get B. However, because they didn't notice that only three enemies went to B, and two actually went to their C point. This allows the enemy team to get C quicker, which allows them to gain points faster, so they gain a five to 10 point lead. Because four of my team is on B, the two players will easily be able to take the A point away from me, giving them an even stronger lead. This is why you have to be ready to rotate, because things like this is why a lot of teams in 5v5 lose. There's only one person on that point, and I'm gonna need one person to rotate to me. Uh, if Hale, you could come get the necromancer first okay so right here I, I made a mistake myself for doing a call out i said get the necromancer when we should have went for the dragon slayer now the reason why i jumped on the necromancer is because there's a bug to where you can start out with the necromancer's alt and it's been very annoying because some players have been doing this bug and been alting as soon as they get into the first fight not only that we also lost b point and we're going to be losing a point here soon which gives the enemy team a massive lead however we do manage to turn it around gonna see if I can get this guy to face me. Now right here what I did was the Dragon Slayer is doing what's called kill chasing. If he stayed on the point, his team would have had the capture and we would have been triple capped at right at the beginning of the fight. But because he was so focused on just wanting to kill me to improve his KDA, I was able to kite him around and get him away from the point allowing Hale to basically 1v1 and stall on the point which as you can see in the top right, it kept it contested so they couldn't capture the point. Uh, Hill should be good. Uh, how's B looking? Okay, B's good. I just got it. Okay. Um. I'm gonna stay B for a sec. I think the warrior's gonna come up. Uh, some of these guys might respawn. Right here, the reason why I jumped onto A point with Hale is because Hale is going to lose the fight. He's super low health, the Dragon Slayer has more health, and the Dragon Slayer is a natural counter to the Guardian class. So, I jumped on the point so that when he died, the Dragon Slayer couldn't even capture the point and it's also contested. I'm helping, I'm helping Hale though because he's low health. Uh, we're actually going to need some help here. I'm stuck on B right now. Should be good even in the 1v2 throw. 
I'm helping Hale though because he's low health. Uh, we're actually gonna need some help here. I'm stuck on B right now. Should be good even in a 1v2 throw. Yeah, I'm gonna be good. Okay. Where is gonna respawn though? Now this was actually a pretty intense fight. Uh, if you guys paid attention, what I did was I used block and I saved my ultimate. So then when block ran up, I then used my ultimate in wind stance so that it gave me 100% dodge for three seconds, basically allowing me to continue the fight. I should be able to survive this. Wind stance alt. Okay, he's dead. We got A now. Bye. I'm that gonna be good. good. You're, you, you're gonna be good? Maybe. I'm not sure if I will be. But right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rotate to B. We got the triple cap though. It should be okay. Bounty's up. Hale got it though. Uh, I won't be okay. Is a bunch of guys coming? Yeah, I'm coming. If you can kind of just like stall. So the reason why I jumped into this fight on B is because Vido's about to die and the cooldown or respawn timer is only 5 seconds so she can respawn and immediately go somewhere else to help the team. Whereas I'm at B, now I can keep these two enemies busy and distracted while my team is out doing other things. Uh, he ulted me hardcore. The necromancer's low though, the necromancer should be at like 30% I think. Yeah, he's low. Gonna snipe him. Wait, I'm coming back to- okay, no, you got Sabbath on B so you should be good. Uh, A is clear. I don't see anybody going to A. So I'm gonna rotate to C and help. Now we got B, I'm just gonna keep, keep them away from the point. Now right here, I wasn't really paying attention. I thought the point was already captured and I was taking it back, but we already had it under control. But this is also a really good section to show because this is what happens when you kill Chase. There's three people trying to kill Hale and Kale is distracting them. So since there's three people on Hale, there's only two other enemies somewhere else on the map. Meaning we have full control over the map right now because those three players are choosing to kill Chase. Hale so I can, Hale so I can, there we go. Okay, we're good. They're like, they're kill chasing Hale like super hard. So we can cut them. So now because those three players are so busy with Hale, we now have their spawn in a pincer to where Sabbath, me, and Vido now can go in and take out these two enemies. We can make them respawn and have a little fun now because we control the whole entire map because three people chose to kill chase. I'm off if Sabbath, or wait a second. Wait, yeah, they're going okay. back to here. We should be good. Yeah, they're not gonna go for A point. I'm gonna go B. Okay. Keep it on B. Oh, there's a man I can't go. I tried to get a pop, but the neck man's just kill chasing me. So because they were kill chasing, we were basically able to pick them off one by one, which completely scattered their team, allowing us full control of the map for way too long of a time period. Now, the issue that the team, or the enemy team is doing right now, is that when they respawn, they're funneling in one at a time, and I have Kitty Cat on my side healing me and supporting me, so every single time they run in, they're basically f running into a losing battle. What they need to do is regroup and take the points back. We're kind of just controlling C right now with the healer. Okay, I got health pot, so we should be good. Yeah, we're come. good. Um, I'm kind of low. I got block though. I don't have my ultimate, so I can't win stance alt yet. Where you at? Okay, I'm gonna have to block this. Okay, first necromancer's dead. Okay, now there's two people on this point. I'm gonna have to get someone to rotate. Because we're gonna lose C. But we held it for a really good time though. And bounty's up, so we can win with the bounty. I'm just a good bounty right now. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Just let them have the points. Everybody just rotate to bounty. And here's the best part of the video. Because they took so long just to get their C point back, it literally opened up bounty to be completely wide open, and this is what got gave us the win. And we win. There we go. That was flawless. <laughs> you guys played insanely good. I think I could have played it better. You can, well, I mean, like, 
for reacting to call outs we're like i could tell you and me were kind of rusty because we haven't done it in like a long time but overall like everyone did really good yes so yeah thank you guys for watching and checking out my content if you want to see more and be up to date why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of my content that i make you can also find me on twitter and i also stream over on twitch and also check out our pvp community discord server where you can meet other pvpers in the aq3d community take care everyone